with the front end now secure, I'll loop it under the tail. Bring it around to the other side. Trim to length right at the front of the hip. A spot of super glue. And we'll press the front edge of the breaching strap into position. I'm having to hold it up below the tail a little bit. There we go. So join me once this cures. With the front edge of the quarter strap secured under the breaching strap, I'm going to try and lift this up a little, and what I've discovered is I'm probably super glued under there, so I'm not going to work too hard. I just want to get a little bit of slack running in the martingale and the quarter straps. That brings us to our next strap, and this is the belly strap. We want to start with our strip at the top of the back pad. Or this or the saddle and then we want to wrap it around the girth of the animal so that it comes back to the back pad again now the trick here is gonna be to do this loosely enough that you preserve just a little loop a little slack here under the belly and it holds up the martingale you can do this to, to taste I got lucky on my first try I'm gonna leave it right there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up here I'm gonna trim off the excess of my belly strap and I'm gonna secure it with just a spot of super glue Good. I'm feeling pretty comfortable about this. Let's go ahead and return once the super glue has cured. The next part of the harness that I want to work on is the hames along with the backer strap and two tug straps. The hames is a metal frame that sits on top of the collar and the pad. And this is what all the hardware really attaches to. The hames are usually two pieces that are attached down at the bottom front of the animal by a chain or a heavy strap and at the top by, uh, again, a, a chain or a heavy strap. I'm making mine one piece for ease. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some fine wire, and in this case it happens to be 26 gauge floral wire to represent my tubular Hames. The thing that I want to do is I want to measure the circumference of my animal's neck at the collar. And for my model, it comes to be about six feet around. And I want to create two eyelets in my wire, two little loops. And these are going to be my rain guides later. 
there are all kinds of connections to the Hames, and I don't know that I understand all of them, and this has to be the most simplified version ever. But once we have two loops in here, and mine are about four and a half feet apart, the next thing I want to do is I want to take my Hames, and I want to wrap it around something about the diameter of my horse's neck. And I find that for most of the O scale horses, a uh, base of an X-Acto knife, the handle of an X-Acto knife is really nice. So there, having bent the hames into that shape, what I then want to do is I want to take about six feet worth of strap and attach it to the bottom of the U of the Hames. This back strap is going to come from the collar to the front attachment point on the drop tongue and bear the weight of the wagon in braking. I then have two tug straps. These are the main straps that the animal will pull with and these go back to the uh, rear tree on the drop tongue. I've made mine very long. They only need to be about the length of the animal from collar to this part of the horse, which is called the hawk. Maybe a little longer, and then we're gonna add some chain to it later. So what I do is I, I come from the bottom of the hames and I come up about a third to two-fifths of the way up and I attach those straps. So that's how we're going to make the hames. I've tried uh, making the hames a couple of other ways, generally with a little bit heavier wire, and uh, it's been satisfactory, but the problem is this loop doesn't translate well with heavier gauge wire. I've also tried using four millimeter rings that are available from the hobby store to give the attachment points on the hames, but these are too large. To be the right size, I would need about a two millimeter ring, and those are available from specialty fishing supply stores, but they're very expensive. So I've decided to forego that. Many of the decorative hames are silver, so you could use uh, some other form of metal that would shine a little bit. When we have the hames complete, what we then want to do is put it on the animal, and I'll do this upside down. If I can lift it off of my workspace at all. Turning the animal around, putting the open end of the hames up at the top by the neck, centering the back strap on the center of the collar. That is going to be the position that we want to kind of orient things in to get started. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a tiny bit of super glue here to hold this while we do repositioning and positioning of the rest of the hames and the collar. With the front of the hames secured to the collar, I like to stretch the back strap out to one of the four the feet and just tuck it onto that. The next thing I like to do is I like to take the tug straps and pull them back to the hawking. The hawking is the equivalent of the human ankle. So you can see there's the heel right there. So this is in case when we super glue the rest of the hames to the collar, if the straps happen to get caught, at least they're in roughly the right position. So again, pull the tug strap out over the hawking. So this is the foot bones, and here's the toes and the hoof and this would be the uh, lower leg and the upper leg. So pull that, pull that strap and secure it somewhere around the hawking. 
With that done, you can take the hames and you can press it in and try and get it to better form fit the collar. When you have it the way you like it, making sure that our rain eyelets are facing outwards, go ahead and give it just another spot of super glue. You may have to do a couple of times because my hames want to jump out and away from the collar. So I want it to at least be secure up through the rain eyelet. So there we are. We are now at the point where the uh, basic team harness for an O scale horse is complete. I'm gonna let everything cure and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna work on the bridle and the blinders. So we're gonna continue now with the bridle. I have cut some six inch wide material from my electrical tape and I wanna first create the blinders. So I'm gonna cut a six by six inch square, two of them, one for each eye. And I'm gonna place those right over the horse's eye. I want the uh, blinder to project about two inches below the horse's eye, leaving about four inches above the horse's so eye. there's how the blinders look at this point. The next thing I want to do is I want to have the face piece. You can make your face plate whatever shape you like. Develop a little signature for your saddle maker. plate down onto the horse's face pull it up over their ears connect it to our checking strap good those are in place now what I've done is I've gone off camera and I've cut some two inch wide strips of electrical tape and the first one we're going to do is a combination strap. And this combination strap is going to be the cheek piece and the head piece all in one. So I'm going to start here just behind the corner of the horse's mouth and on the blinder. I'm going to lay this strap down. Right about there so that it looks like the blinder is part of this cheek strap. It comes up comes up behind the horse's ears around to the other side again part of the blinder And stops just short of the mouth. Blinder got shifted upward a little bit. Put it back down in position. <clears throat> the next piece we're going to do is the nose band. So, using that same 
two inch. I'm going to start just behind the horse's mouth, wrap all the way around. making sure that I intersect the cheek band so that it looks like it's all sewn together. Fix my joint between these two pieces so that they overlap nicely. Totally missed over here on the other side. Get all these pieces squared back up. We need one more strap. This is the brow band. So it's going to come from the cheek strap. Across the head, the face piece, just in front of the ears, and attached to the cheek band on the other side. Now the adhesive on these is all still very tenuous. It just doesn't hold them in position on this unpainted model very well at all. So what I'm going to do is go off camera give the entire horse an overcoat of clear flat enamel. I went off camera and used some Krylon flat crystal clear to overcoat my animal and I got a little bit of a surprise. The crystal coat uh, left these white shady deposits on my harness work. For me, that's not a bad thing because I model the winter, so I can I can leave that there as snow and ice debris. But for you, uh, maybe I would use something along the lines of the Rust-Oleum matte clear enamel, which I know uh, dries to a much more favorable finish. It it uh, it doesn't have any of that white undercoat or uh, white debris that's left on it. So here at the bottom of the frame is an example of the finished bit that I'm going to make. Most of the bits that I've seen in real life are silver in color, they're chromed or something. Um, but I don't have a material that I like around here that's satisfactory. I'm going to construct mine out of the 26 gauge floral wire and I'll paint this if I feel it's necessary. So what we have is a loop of floral wire with a long twisted shaft. To it, I've glued some thread. This is just some brown polyester thread that I had around. Um, and the thing that we want to do, let's make sure that we get kind of a 90 degree angle between our uh, rein and the bit. So let's show you how we did that. You may remember from previous wagon making videos that I create these loops with an L-shaped hook of spring steel placed into my pin vise. So what I do is I take my floral wire and I wrap it around the hook on the pin vise. I then hold it with a small pair of pliers and I twist. This is giving us that twisted shaft that we're going to use. The thing about the floral wire is at some point it just kind of reaches its own degree of compression beyond which you can't do it anymore and the wire will just fatigue as you've seen there. And that gives you a pretty tight spiral 
I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. So there is our bit loop. So now what I want to do is I want to take my thread and loop it, put it through the loop. Got a little fray on that thread that's not letting me get through the loop easily. I'll cut the fray off. Loop through the hole again. I'm going to stretch this back. And what I'm going to do is take just a little spot of tape and tape down the two ends of my thread. Now I'm going to take my bit loop. I'm going to twist it until my thread is tightly twisted here. I'm going to hold it at a 90 degree angle and just put a spot of super glue right there on the thread loop, metal loop, joint. And we'll give that just a couple seconds here to set up. With the super glue set, I'll untwist my rain thread until I find the point at which it's not connected through the super glue anymore and just trim off the excess. So now what we have are two straight shafts of twisted wire with a loop on the end that represents the bit and then the rain itself. I'm now going to cut a hole that's a little bit bigger than the diameter of that twisted loop here at the corner of the mouth of, of my horse. I uh, managed to push it through my previous nose band, so I've kind of messed up some of my previous efforts. I'm not too worried, we'll get to it. So now what I want to do, I want to grab this bit by the loop. And I want to trim this twisted wire to about the half the width of the host, horse's nose. Part of this is going to go into the horse's mouth and part of it is going to bend downwards to represent the bit. So I can see about where I want to make my bend. Right about there. Give it a little bend. Goodness, things are flying all over. And I'll put that in the horse's, the corner of the horse's mouth. A little spot of super glue just to hold everything in place. Let that cure. Okay, so we're on the other side of the horse. I'm going to go ahead and take the rein and put it through the loop on the haws. And then pull that through. And 
going to figure out the orientation of our 90 degree bend. I'm going to grab the wire, a little bit down the shaft there to represent the long lever arm kind of of the, of the bit. Bend it to a 90 degree angle and then trim off the excess. This L portion here is what's going to go in the corner of the animal's mouth. Again, into the corner of the animal's mouth at that pre-drilled hole. Then I can pull the rein tight. I've already looped the rein in the paw of the other side. And there we go. When we put the animal on the wagon, we'll take the outside and the inside reins and we'll combine them in a, a new fashion when we work on the teamster himself. So there we are. There is a team harness for an O-scale horse.